Babies. They're all naked. Yeah. They're all naked. With diapers on. And they shit their diapers. It was terrible. Absolutely horrible. Hello! What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with all 115 Wow How are you guys doing? Welcome to Sunday with all I hope you're having a great morning so far I have a sad little announcement for you guys Last week, Sunday with Ola, where I was talking about the Adam Jones Epiphone guitar You know, I, uh, I talked about one of the artists that would make the backside of the Epiphone guitar it, He passed, by the way, but his name was Ernst F I thought it would be okay to say his name uh, You know, because th that's his name However, YouTube did not agree with this I cannot say his name So last week, Sonny with Ola gave me a lower reliability rating with YouTube <sighs> That's just how it goes sometimes, <laughs> holy shit So now even when I say the name Ernst f**ks I have to censor his last name f**ks Also, I didn't want to disrespect the artist Ernst f**ks uh, He passed away a couple years ago And I'm really keen to see the new graphics on the guitar So there you go, a little bit of drama for you right there Maybe? No? Okay also new for today is that there's a new guitar wall on this wall You can't see shit, but there's more guitars over here now And it feels really great, it feels like I'm sitting in a guitar store right now Alright The news Alright Rex Brown of Pantera Tribute Contracted a slight slight uh, variant of COVID uh, and missed out on a couple of shows The headlines wrote Rex Brown is sick, sits out remainder 2022 tour And people were like, oh shit Now it's not Pantera, it's just Phil and Selma and the Illegals now But uh, you know, it was actually just two more shows for this year So it's not like it was a big thing And instead of Rex, we'll have uh, uh, Derek Engman of Cal Decapitation And former down bassist Bobby Landgraf For the band's two remaining shows in Sao Paulo, Brazil I got a very mild strain of Covid But because of our own protocols I simply do not want to risk getting my brothers or the crew sick Also, if you haven't seen, I released a reaction video of, of me watching Pantera It's fucking stupid, I know, but you know, it's it's Pantera I'm happy that Pantera are playing And you know, uh, I'm new to reaction videos I'm not gonna continue doing, but maybe a little bit Just about Pantera, is that okay? No? I'm sorry Staying on the path of Pantera You know, Dimebag's old guitar tech, Grady He's been a part of this whole tour And he will make sure that, you know, sax sounds like uh, You know, g give the homage to Dimebag and all that And also with that, he's also doing a lot of the, you know, behind the scenes controlling and stuff One of the things being controlling the whammy for a song like Be Coming In this past week, uh, Pantera tribute show in Santiago, Chile Scott Ian did the job instead of Grady The Anthrax man revisited a role he once performed for Dimebag Dial when Pantera were on tour 97-98 and operated a Digitech Whammy V that carried a strong instructional message It says Scott, don't f*** up <laughs> Shit. Now it's been revealed that Anthrax guitarist Scott Ian was responsible for controlling Wild's Digitech Whammy Pal during the uh, band's performance of Becoming at the band's most recent show in Santiago Alright, let's see Let's go Wow oh, Such a banger man I, I think that was pretty cool You know, they were friends and all That's cool And you know, the reason why Grady was doing all of this work behind the stage And not letting, you know, Dimebag do all this Is because Dimebag wanted to roam around free You know, when you have a whammy pal that you need to use at all times Like you have to stand on one spot in front of the stage I mean, Dimebag, he, he didn't have any reins on him You know, he, he, he's out there in the world roaming free, man so th that's why he, uh, Grady was doing this I'm gonna be completely honest, this has been an absolute dry as f hell week in regards to news So we're gonna uh, uh, read this John Petrucci reveals why he positions his guitar high and nerdy 
The Dream Theater virtuoso also offered his glowing opinion of the Instagram guitar scene, which he says has raised the bar for guitar players. Watch multiple videos of John Petrucci performing live or gaze at any action shots of him on stage and you'll probably be hit with two thoughts. How does he make his beard so, <laughs> so luscious and why does he hold his guitar so high? When asked if there are any guitar parts he finds particularly challenging to play live, Petrucci reflected, Those moments happen like every 16 bar or so. Now, when there are parts like that, I practice those a bit more before I go on stage. Okay, so basically, he tries to play the solo, he f***s it up, and then it's like, okay, that was, uh, yeah, I, there's another chance tomorrow on tomorrow's gig. <laughs> As it turns out, his constant commitment to performing head turning guitar parts eventually encouraged Truch. Can we, okay, can we kill this trend right there to call him the Truch? To challenge classic and training, adopt a new stance and hoik that guitar strap up a little bit higher than usual. So there it is, shocker. He keeps his guitar high up so he can actually nail, you know, the incredibly technical music that they're writing. You know, I really hope that uh, Dream Fitter is coming uh, to Sweden in February. There was talks about this, but now uh, there was a, a, a big company that arranges all the gigs in Sweden uh, filed for bankruptcy a couple of weeks ago. So I'm really hoping that the, the, the show will happen because that will probably hopefully mean that John Petrucci comes here for a coffee with Ola. Oh my god, that would be amazing. I'm gonna show in the picture. I, I have John Petrucci in the bathroom. And some people are gonna be like, oh, that's so disrespectful. Oh, I keep John Petrucci in the bathroom. But no, it's a great place, man. It's just, you know, in before you go to the actual toilet uh, area and the, uh, the, the actual toilet, it's in the part where you wash your hands. You know, I can wash Petrucci and be like, man. Petrucci, man. The truch. Fear Factory's next tour will be in a van. The cost of touring is making it impossible to make any money. Touring isn't going well for a lot of artists. So going back to last week's segment where I talked about Devin Townsend having a problem touring. And there's been discussions of this in the past weeks, you know, about, uh, you know, venues taking cuts of like merch and the amount of merch being sold. And uh, also uh, about, you know, general cost of, of touring has gone up because, you know, inflation and, uh, you know, gas prices have gone up and everything's just way more expensive nowadays. And you know what? Touring with a van in the US, it's not, it's not an impossible or a bad thing at all. Uh, you know, obviously a tour bus is, uh, you know, very comfortable and you get to sleep in a comfortable little bunk and all that. But, uh, you know, a van tour is perfectly fine. It's just that the distances in the US, you have to cover a lot of distance to do touring in the US. Uh, it's, it's a big country, man. It's a big country. I'm from Sweden. It's a very small country. Oh, so very small. Uh, US, this is so very big. And it's also not completely sure that you will get a bus nowadays. I mean, uh, when Meshuggah was touring with Inflames, they, they said there was a bus available, but when they arrived, there wasn't any bus around and they had to do a van tour. It's just sometimes it, it, suck, it sucks a little bit more, but it's, you know, it works. It's possible. For me, Fear Factory is a legendary and a, a very significant band from the 90s that, you know, hold a really, you know, I really, really respect them. So just like with Devin last week, where I said like, I don't want Devin to, you know, basically beg his fans to buy his music. You know, I just want the artist to have it easy. You know, the artist, they've poured down the amount of work. They've been grinding all their lives touring and all of that. And, uh, you know, I just want them to make money. I mean, this is part of their job. They have to make money out of something. I mean, if they don't make any money from streaming services, uh, you know, like Spotify and all that, because that's also a thing where, you know, bands are just making less money than they did when they sold albums. What, what's going to be left for the artists? Huh? I don't know. Anyways, here's Lars Ulrich, because Lars Ulrich is a drummer. Back when Metallica released Lex Eterna, you know, I made a little comment uh, about the drums. People are complaining about the snare being, you know, has a high pitch noise in it and also that this, uh, you know, the uh, the drums doesn't sound necessarily like it's Lars playing. So, uh, you know, probably a couple tricks in the book. I mean, really, who cares? It's an album. On albums, I think basically anything goes nowadays. I mean, I think people dropped the ball <laughs> a long time ago where, you know, bands are just using auto-tune and they're just quantizing the drums or edit the guitars. It's, it's just normalized, man. So seeing that Metallica would do something like this or, you know, I have no idea if they did it, 
Maybe this Lars playing, I have no idea. But hearing that they might eventually have quantized or, you know, fixed the drums, that doesn't surprise me at all. Anyways, here's Lars Ulrich's isolated drum tracks from uh, Metallica's uh, Lux Eterna. I want to listen to this. Hello. Look at Lars. He's so greedy in this picture. It's the ISO, man. First of all, I think the drum sound is really f***ing kick-ass. I can hear that they've been using, uh, you know, some kind of isolation technique with this because you can hear the swaying in the cymbals. This is not the real isolated drum track. This is probably something that someone poured through uh, one of those isolation uh, apps or websites where you can separate the different tracks. Uh, that's why it's swaying. It sounds a little bit wavy and shit. It's very exact, man. But at the same time, I, I don't think it sounds necessarily quantized, you know? It sounds pretty swingy. I don't think I'm any smarter after watching this video. Is it quantized? Is it not? Who cares? I don't care. If he pulls it off live, what does it matter, right? Well, on the topic of Metallica, I have to tell you guys a story. I'm not completely uh, proud about this, but last week I started playing Fortnite. Okay, okay, okay. Calm your tits. Calm your tits. Are you okay, Pixie? Are you okay? You're okay there. There is a reason why I started playing Fortnite. Uh, it's gonna sound boomerish as f**k, okay? It's, but just hear me out, okay? Inflation is happening. Things are not as easy as before. Electricity prices in Sweden are insane. Absolutely insane. And also mortgages and stuff like that is just, uh, you know, it's not easy with the inflation. That's just what I wanted to say. And after I pay the monthly invoices at home, you know, and I, the anger just builds up in me, you know, I just want to go online and shoot a 12 year old in the face. <laughs> That's why I want to play Fortnite. No, it's also because I'm trying to get my kids to start playing something else other than Roblox. So I'm trying to sort of introduce them to uh, shooting games. And, uh, you know, Fortnite is very, very casual. So I started playing Fortnite. Me and my son had our first real game yesterday and we won and uh, he was very happy and I'm very happy. No, but the, uh, one of the reasons why I got Fortnite is also because it's free to play and you don't have to pay shit. And I, I, I'm not going to buy any games right now because, you know, it, it, you know, it, games cost money. Derailing, let's go back to Metallica. Metallica just released uh, emote in, uh, in Fortnite and I saw this the other day and uh, when I was playing and, you know, I was kind of like, holy shit, that's so f smart. I mean, if you haven't seen Fortnite, basically Fortnite's filled with all these licensed things and skins and, you know, you can play as the Hulk or as like Rick and Morty and Me6 or, you know, it, like everyone that's smart has a skin on for, for skin. <laughs> well, okay, let's call the game Foreskin now. Uh, no, but th there's so many... It's a really smart product where it's all about, you know, people paying extra to uh, get skins and whatnot. Now you can pay to get a Metallica emote uh, with Master of Puppets. And I was playing around and I saw this and I heard Master of Puppets in the game. And I'm like, holy shit, this is so smart. You know, all these kids are playing Fortnite and they get introduced to Master of Puppets in the greatest way, in my opinion. So... What? What the f*** was that? <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. Okay, let's... I don't want that sound again. It was terrible. Oh, there's... Oh, oh my god. So look, you get this emote and you can... Uh, join together with your friends and you, you know, create the full band, basically. It's really f***ing cool. I like, oh, I like that part the best when they're in the garage. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, I thought it was fun because uh, I just recently started playing Fortnite. It's, uh, it's a, f I guess it's a fun game. It's, it's, it's casual and I'm happy, you know, I'm happy to be able to find a game that I can play together with my kids. So that's why I'm playing Fortnite. And also now they get to listen to Metallica. That's a good thing, okay? Last week, Chimera, you know Chimera, one of the better metalcore bands of uh, 2000 to 2010. They have announced a couple of reunion shows where they go together again and play a couple of shows in Ohio. If you haven't heard about Chimera, Incredible guitar players in that band. You have Rob Arnold, you have Mark Hunter, and uh, oh my god, man. Insane bad. Unfortunately for us, the fans, they kind of shut down the rumor about a new album uh, being in the making. He's doing an FAQ on Twitter. Okay, 
Uh, what is the lineup? Me, Rob, mother Picasa, Jim, Austin. More dates? No. Tour? No. Come to Brazil? Yes. But no. Uh, new album? When? No. So basically shooting down all the rumors, this is just about these two reunion shows. It's the 20th anniversary of The Impossibility of Reason and uh, it's in Ohio. It's not very close by me, but you know, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. All right, the winery dogs. Have you heard about this trio? Well, I would say it's probably one of the more successful Mike Portnoy projects after Dream Theater. Uh, you know, Mike Portnoy did the Sons of Apollo. He did uh, uh, Adrenaline Mob, and uh, then also the winery dogs. He also has other projects as well with you know, uh, uh, you know, Transatlantic and shit like that. A very, very, a lot more proggy. A liquid tension too and all that. And he's also been touring with John Petrucci this past year. He did this uh, John Petrucci album. Now, the Winery Dogs with Billy Sheehan and uh, God Amongst the Living, Richie Kotzen, have released a new single called Sanadu or Sanadu. And what I love about the Winery Dogs is that they, they create really catchy songs while still being very prog, so very prog pop, prog, me prog metal pop, prog metal pop. Uh, catchy choruses and uh, dude, Richie Kotzen. I, I don't think we deserve Richie Kotzen. How is he like? He's the most incredible guitar player. He's playing with his fingers only, and also he's like the closest we can get to a Chris Cornell voice today. Anyways, they released this new song and video, Sanadu. It's up on YouTube. You can check it out. Holy shit! All right, last but not least, we're gonna check out Mike Patton of Mr. Bungle fighting a drone. Let's watch. Then we have Scott Ian, look at that. Oh shit. <laughs> what is he gonna do? Is he gonna kiss it? Oh no. Oh, <laughs> okay. He wants to f it up. I wanna see Mr. Michael lie. Oh shit. Anyways, that was the news. Hey, uh, hello, what's up? Guitar of the week, baby, look at this. Brought out an old YouTube classic. This, my friends, is the Ibanez MTM2. And if you're a follower on my channel, you have definitely seen this guitar, at least on the early stages of my channel. Holy shit, take a look at this. I don't think I can get rid of some of these fingerprints on here. Look at that. What is that? Looks like a ball sack has been placed there or something. You know, I think I used this guitar a lot live too. It was my live guitar, so I think there's a lot of this. This is live juice, basically. You know, live juice? Live yes, juice. live juice. The juices that uh, come from being uh, playing live. <laughs> this is uh, a Mick Thompson signature guitar, actually. This is like the, the low cost version because there's also the uh, MTM one, which was, was a little bit more high spec. So this was the, the shitty one, <laughs> but it was the more cool looking one, in my opinion, because it was completely black, white binding, no inlays on the fretboard. Look at that. That's clean. And it has the reversed Ibanez headstock. And look at that, Ola England has tried to uh, paint out seven. With a marker, I've tried to kind of scrape that away, but it's coming back. Just can't get rid of that. And also before I put in a Seymour Duncan Dimebucker in this guitar, I had the V8 pickup. So this guitar came with a V8 and a V7 pickup. You know, a lot of people are always kind of knocking off uh, you know, shitty import pickups, but these, these were actually really good. And also take a look at this. Even though the bridge looked like it would be a floating bridge with all of these, you know, fine tuners, there's a screw here going straight into the body, holding it in place. It's a hack. Mick Thompson liked the feel of a Floyd Rose bridge, but he doesn't like the Floyd Rose. So he has a fixed Floyd Rose bridge, basically. They bolted it shut to the guitar so it wouldn't move. Look at the backside. There you go, Mick Thompson fake signature right there. It's a well-playing guitar, but I hated the finished neck. It's a bolt-on guitar, but it still has a finished black neck. And I just, I just can't do finished necks, man. It's just not my forte. Made in Indonesia. Look at that. Also, you have the locking nut, which is not needed because it's not a fixed bridge guitar. But if you like the feel of a Floyd Rose, you want to have a locking nut too. I just removed that bullshit right there. All right. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh yeah, you know what? I remember when I installed this pickup, I just, uh, I, di I didn't, I, this is not in use. This pickup is not in use. I just, you know, I hate soldering. So I just cut everything and just plugged in this straight into the volume knob. So this pickup is not active. Yeah, I definitely cut off the, so I think <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing, man. Maybe it's a split version of this. I don't remember. <laughs> Oh, there's something happening there. Maybe I did do like an attempt of connecting the two. I don't know. Okay, it's a little bit angled. Dude, those are some chunky strings. And that smell... It smells like 2011, Ola. <laughs> this is just not... This is not a well playing guitar. It, it's actually kind of... Balls. But it looks great. Look at that. I would lie if I said that uh, this did not inspire me with my uh, first signature guitar from Strictly 7, which also had a white binding and a black body, you know, the white binded the neck and all that. Except that my Strictly 7 did have the natural back and it was satin, so it played a lot better. But look, it's just a classic looking guitar, man. There's something about the, you know, the white binding and the black. It's just reverse headstock you know also you can see this is old england being lazy right there look at this so there you go that's guitar of the week the ibanez mtm2 holy shit old england all right question of the day the section where my beautiful youtube members get to ask me a question with a video also members put more questions in the faq section of the discord channel okay that's how i get the the questions to me you know we have a new question for today let's check it out Hey Ola, um, just wanted to ask you what your thoughts were on Buckethead. Um, he's got over 330 um, solo albums at the moment, and over the course of his career, he's at almost 500 uh, album projects, whether that be like collaborations or his own stuff, like everything together is almost like 500 albums. And uh, I was wondering if you've ever listened to him, if you've ever checked him out, um, and what your thoughts are on his playing, his musicality, and um, all of that. Hope you're having a great one. Thank you so much for the question. And also, thank you so much for the little lesson right there. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not uh, very familiar with Buckethead. I know he's a sick guitar player. And from what I've heard, he's like, he's a treasure, basically. I know that he has released an incredible amount of solo albums, which I, I don't understand how that's possible. I'm, I'm I, you know, I really struggled just to release one solo album. Uh, now I have two. But, uh, you know, I, just ha thinking about the third one, that f***ed me up. How do you fit, like, 330 albums? It's insane. Also, wasn't he in uh, Guns N' Roses for a short little while and then we got a lot of uh, really fun stories about this? So he was in the band and then he was out of the band and then they tried to get him back into the studio. This was for Chinese Democracy, the album uh, by Guns N' Roses. He wanted to come back. Bakita would agree to come back to the band after uh, Sutat offered to build him a chicken coop in the studio. As the weeks went by, the chicken coop joke started to wear thin, so Bucket comes and says he need a TV so he can sit in the chicken coop and watch porn, and that seemed to really inspire him to record some great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when I think about Buckethead, I think about one of these really hardworking musicians, man, that just, you know, they, they, they will just live on forever because they just work so hard and, you know, they have their fans and uh, they just f***ing pull through anything. Nothing is a problem. A lot of these guitar players, uh, solo guitar players, they live like this. I think he's basically living the dream. He's just f***ing writing music uh, all day long. And, uh, I mean, if he can keep up and continue doing solo album, holy shit, man. I'm jealous. I'm extremely jealous. Thank you so much for the question. Wow. 
Guys, that was it for Sunday with Ola. If you want to be a part of the Sunday with Ola live stream tomorrow, you've had to record the riffs to the last week's drums. If this sounds confusing, I know it is, but you know, you better pay attention a little bit, okay? If you want to be a part of next week's live stream, you download the drums in the description of this video and you make riffs to those drums and maybe I'll check you out on the Monday live stream. It happens on my second channel, okay? Ola England channel number two. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great Sunday. If you want to support what I'm doing, you can get a t-shirt from olaenglandshop.com. There should be like some, some clickable things underneath the video if you're on a browser, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not so sure, but you can click them down there and then you can order. It goes directly to my website. It's pretty cool. Actually, I think they, they implemented that feature uh, like a couple months ago. It's great. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I love you. See ya.